Hello, and have we got a banger for news today for you. It seems that there has been a leak. Yes, a leak in information from sources close to the SEC and the Bitcoin ETF. And it says that it will be approved tomorrow. I know there's people saying that it won't be approved until ever or, or March or something. But the breaking source says we are going to be approved tomorrow. Breaking. Cryptocurrency journalist Jacqueline Milinic speaks. According to sources, very close to the subject, SEC will approve Bitcoin spot ETFs big day tomorrow. Is this real? I don't know. Will it cause a FOMO? Maybe. But it's not the reason we're pumping right now, obviously, because we've been around this um, price since this morning. But there is a leak right now, January 4th, which is today. So according to information obtained from sources close to the subject, the SEC will approve Bitcoin spot ETF applications of many companies. Of course, we've seen these sources have been wrong many times, but keep this in mind. This is the first like leak that hasn't been completely disproved immediately. So Bloomberg's cryptocurrency uh, expert James Seifert also gave the message that we are getting closer regarding Bitcoin spot ETFs in a post just about an hour ago. So it cooperates with another reporter. Bloomberg analysts Eric Balchunas and James Seifert have long thought that Bitcoin ETFs will be approved. And obviously, this is not investment advice. This is just like treading the rumor mill. And this, my friends, is a big rumor. This was 2.37 p.m., so a couple of um, hours ago. But heard from sources extremely close to the matter that Bitcoin spot ETF is going to be approved by the SEC for multiple firms' applications. Expecting something tomorrow. So that gives us a solid timeline to be excited and celebrate and maybe cry if it doesn't. So drop the good news Friday night after markets close so that people who know how to buy real Bitcoin to cold storage can get a few more days of low prices. So you're, you're, that doesn't work because Bitcoin can be bought 24 hours. And it doesn't really matter when you drop the news. You could drop it 3 in the morning and people will buy at 3.05. Trust me on that one. But um, we don't really know who to trust right now. But tomorrow would actually be a pretty big cutoff date. So basically it says like, once again, I blindly trust a random Twitter account. Hey Jacqueline, I I'm a journalist for The Block and we'd love to chat with you. Do you use Snapchat? It would be a convenient way for us to stay in touch. Or maybe you people could just stop making shit up for a cloud, up for cloud for the next five seconds collectively. And uh, you know, we'll see if this is true. Like I have a little bit more trust in Balchunas now because he did actually say the uh, Ripple ETF was fake and it ended up being fake. And Balchunas has made other predictions that are actually real as well. I've never heard of this person, but she is a crypto news reporter. Don't even though I don't really know these crypto news reporters, there definitely could be um, something here tomorrow. I'm going to come to your house and visit you. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, that could be a threat. Uh, people could be wrong, but I think the info will leak to a number of eager investors and we will see a pump before the announcement is official. Maybe. I mean, like, but that would be hours before, the, before it happens. Maybe I'll see tonight during the uh, live stream. But that, my friends would actually be really, really big news. Some of the biggest news um, as of yet. And some people are saying, this is this ain't a coin telegraph intern moment, right? Right? And we know that like what happened with the coin telegraph intern, but it does look like no one's actually refuted this and it does actually cooperate with multiple other people. So this could be very, very big it's, if it's true. But I think everyone is expecting something by the 10th. So it's not really that unexpected. So hopefully something massive tomorrow will actually happen. And that would actually get all our hopes up. Hopefully not to dash all our hopes on the rocks. But I do actually expect something to happen in the next few days. So it's not actually like that um, unexpected. So we could actually have pretty... Um, pretty cool crypto legislation next year because there is a movement to actually have to get our rights to a self-hosted wallet. We know that Elizabeth Warren and others have been very furiously at work to actually deny our right to a self-hosted wallet because obviously the government can't peep into the wallet at any time. And uh, we sh wouldn't, she doesn't want us to have self-hosted wallets without KYC AML, which is ridiculous because you know, like 
I have a wallet and this is not KYC AML. I can put money in this wallet and you don't really know whose wallet this is. It doesn't even have my name on it. So I should have have a digital wallet that isn't completely KYC AML either. Just like I store my cash, I should be able to store my cryptos. Cause you know, like we do store some cash in the bank and that's kind of like us going to the exchanges, but we should have be able to have money ourselves. So to begin the new year on the right foot, many people have taken resolutions from losing weight to saving money. The new year is a great time to start fresh. So perhaps Congress should also set a few resolutions. And I know there's a couple of congressmen that are actually working for this. And I do think like crypto advocates do need to start writing your congressman or at least signing position petitions to congressmen because there are actually a lot of us and this shouldn't be all that controversial. There should be a lot of congressmen that are actually for um, like privacy and personal bank accounts and are like kind of like anti-Fed and they could actually ride the wave on this. So the thing is like, I do think like, you know, they also talk about how the bank doesn't have the authority to establish the CBDC. That one I actually don't care about because I wouldn't use the CBDC anyways. And considering how successful the CBDC is in China, it hasn't. I don't think it'd be successful here. But it is very, very critically important that they pass some of these bills to give us the right to a self-hosted wallet because there are forces in the crypto industry that are trying to take that right away. So... The thing is, like, they could also do this by saying legal tender status does not require private businesses, persons, or organizations to accept U.S. United States coins as currency as payments for goods and services. So essentially, this would actually allow crypto to be accepted as well. And of course, Congress should prevent any agency from restricting the use of self-hosted wallets because that's ridiculous. That's just like saying I can't have a wallet. Holding cryptocurrency in a self-hosted wallet is merely the digital equivalent of holding physical cash in a traditional wallet, which is exactly what I've been pointing out. I have my cards, I have my cash, everything in this wallet. I don't actually have any cash in this wallet because I don't really carry physical cash. But if I did, they wouldn't be KYC AML. If I can have carry physical cash without being KYC AML, that should be able to carry digital money without KYC AML, especially since the digital money was not created by the government. And that's, that might be what the government actually has a problem with. And uh, if you don't allow us to have like personal wallets, you know, it would be a grave threat to personal privacy, Fourth Amendment rights against warrantless search, as well as substantial threat to continued responsible innovation. And it would make, um, you know, like wallet providers, uh, like validators and stuff, very, very difficult to actually operate. So there's a big, big issue there, and they should actually solidify that regardless of which way the election goes. Because I know, at least in the House of Representatives, there are a lot of people on both sides of the aisle that are actually pro-crypto and pro-innovation. And I think there's going to be more and more as like more crypto, high-paying crypto jobs actually come along in the future. So hopefully they can get that underway because that is a big, big deal. That should be like one of the biggest pushes next year to get our absolute right to have self hosted wallets outside of the exchanges that are not KYC AML, uh, at least for our own private wallets. Just like we have physical wallets that aren't KYC AML, we should have digital wallets without KYC AML. And third of all, the SCC is getting very desperate. They want any way to win this Coinbase case as possible. So they basically asked the judge to consider Terraform Labs ruling in the Binance case. If you know what happened, like, uh, the SEC, the judge did determine that the SEC did win over Terra Luna and that Terra Luna was indeed a security. That's like Terra, USTC, Mirror, and all that stuff. Those were actually securities. Um, and they're trying to get, and even though the judge says that this only applies to Terra Luna, they're trying to get that in consideration for both the Coinbase and Binance case because those cases aren't actually going that well for them, especially on the secondary market. So... But the thing is, like, if they consider the Terraform Labs rule, uh, case ruling, they should have to consider the Ripple ruling, too, because, you know, those two rulings are different from different judges. If they consider one, they have to consider the other, and I think Ripple has the bigger impact. Obviously, they did not mention the Ripple case because they don't want the Ripple case actually affecting the Coinbase case, and the SEC has said as much. But if you bring in one, ca if they bring in one case then Coinbase and Binance should be able to bring in the other case. In fact, I would be surprised if Coinbase Binance did not counterfile saying that the judge should consider the Coinbase case. So the SEC's argument is the court's analysis of the Terraform defendant's so-called stablecoin UST is particularly relevant to this court's consideration of defendant's arguments considering Binance's so-called stablecoin BUSD and defendant's staking as a service BNV vault and simple earn programs. 
So the thing is like Coinbase doesn't actually have a stable coin. So that might be like kind of hard for them to actually bring it up against Coinbase. Binance obviously is an easier target, but then BNB isn't really backed by US, like BUSD or anything. So the relationship is actually not there and there is no expectation of profit for investing in like something like BUSD, obviously. Um, obviously both Coinbase and Binance have filed a motion to dismiss these lawsuits and I hope they actually get it, at least one of them. As long as Coinbase wins, I think we're actually okay. Binance has other issues, obviously, and the SEC is trying to leverage those issues with Binance against Coinbase as well, which I don't think is actually going to work out all that well. So this is like, uh, one of the last ditch efforts of the SEC to gain some common ground. Remember, there's two steps to the SEC winning. First, they have to not get the case dismissed. And second, they actually have to uh, prove that they can win the case. And I don't know if they can do either one of them, at least for the Coinbase case, which is the most substantial case. Because if Coinbase basically uh, wins their case, that may means that all those coins that are actually on Coinbase are not securities in the secondary market. And that's mostly what we care about. And many of those coins like Cardano would not be open to prosecution because they had their IPO outside the United States in which the SEC has no jurisdiction. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.